Hello Munchkins, it's Munchie here. Welcome back to another intake at the rescue. I am recovering from a cold. Today is gonna actually be a surrender intake, which uh, behind me, you are probably wondering, what the heck is this? Education time, that's what this is. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Munchie and I run Munchie's Plates for Homeless Pets here in the state of Washington with my volunteers. We're a 501c3 small rodent rescue for hamsters, gerbils, and mice. Today, we are gonna be discussing the surrender intake, the name Goose. Now, I'm not gonna keep this name. I don't like the name Goose. I mean, well, I do like the name Goose, my bad. I should refresh what I'm saying because <laughs> I'd like to talk first before I explain. I don't like the name Goose for her. I feel like Goose is a strong name. For what I see from her, she's, <sighs> well, maybe she's sassy like a Goose, but I don't like calling her Goose because we do also call Lucy, our cat, Lucy Goose. For whatever reason, I'm just thinking, nope, 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 this is not gonna work for me, so her name's gonna change. But she was surrendered as Goose, and she was surrendered because her owner was across the country and moved away from Washington to New York, so all the way on the other end. They did not want to travel with Goose, so they decided to surrender. Now, this is a top priority surrender. We get sometimes where people want to relinquish an animal because they just give up. We don't like that anymore because it's their responsibility. There are so many ways to keep an animal and it's your responsibility to know the animal which you are taking care of and try to adjust around the animal. If you take on a baby, you have to adjust your schedule for the baby. You have to understand if you take on a living thing, you have the responsibility to care for it. A lot of the times small animals are impulse bought because pet stores like to do this whole scheme where they display them in a display tank, try to get people to ooh and ah over them, or for people like that of the community that likes to rescue these guys, they think that rescuing them from a display tank is the appropriate way of doing that. That is not. Unless the animal is special needs, medical, aggressive, there's no reason to be taking a perfectly fine animal from a pet store. You're providing money for that pet store to keep getting more. So perfectly fine hamsters like Goose come to the rescue needing just a second chance. There's nothing wrong with Goose. Goose is very healthy, 160 some odd grams that we weighed her at today. She's about a year old, originally from Petco. This person, I don't know if they know about updated care, but obviously what I have behind me is not appropriate care, and I will be discussing this. Now, bin cages are fantastic to be housing your animal in if you do it correctly, and if you get the correct size bin cage. Remember, horizontal is the way to go, not vertical. As you can see here, this person stacked them. But this style is not appropriate because there's no ventilation down here. So you're cutting off the ventilation up here, so that means it's gonna be humid down here. There's no way to be well ventilated. Now this did not come with an actual top, so it's a possibility based on the height of the bedding and the height of the items up here that they just never had a lid. And they probably took off the lid because they couldn't DIY it. But when I went to take this off, it looked like at one point, that it might have been ventilated. But the weird part is this hamster chewed around the rim because this right here looks like they chewed it. This does not look like a clean cut from a person because you could see all of these little holes right here where it looks like they grabbed on with their teeth and started trying to cut away at it. But it's a possibility that someone just had a really messy job. But this to me looks like it's been chewed heavily. And this could have actually been the first bin that they had. And then they just ended up removing all of the ventilation because there is more sticky around here. There's sticky right here. This could have been to keep the top layer on. To me, this is just very messy and there's not enough bedding and there's not enough space here. It's not enough square feet. It looks like it's slightly bigger than a 10 gallon tank. So 10 gallon tanks are 200 square inches. So I assume this is probably around 300 inches. 20.5 by, and you wanna measure the middle by the way. You don't wanna measure the top because that doesn't have any space for them to move around because this lip goes out further. 20.5 times 14. That is 287. Well, my bad, it is under 300 square inches of floor space. In America, 450 plus is the minimum. 
with more being better for them. They are foraging animals and they have a territory, so it's not really appropriate to be keeping them in something small. And it sucks that we have domesticated these animals because honestly, domestication for them is probably the worst thing that ever happened to them. But we love these guys a lot. We're trying our best to educate the public about what they need. But if you guys don't think you can provide for them, or if you're scared about them stress chewing, getting out, security issues, maybe a hamster is not right for you. And that's perfectly okay. There's other small animal companions that might be suitable for you, especially since these guys are nocturnal. And just a reminder, we are not trying to shame the past owner. The past owner probably was trying to do what was best and or might have had misinformation, but I tried to encourage people to please do your due diligence, research first before getting the animal. Don't start on the wrong foot by saying, well, I'll get more later. It's always a bad idea when you have it like that because that means that you don't have the animal's interests at heart first. And sometimes if it's money issues, wait till you get everything set up. We have what I assume is a three to four ounce water bottle from Petco. It is taped in. This is absolutely dangerous. And I wasn't there to let the person know because this person's already in New York, but this person should know better. This tape could easily get stuck to the hamster. The hamster likes climbing up water bottles anyways. I've seen several of mine, like all of them do it, where if you have an inside water bottle, they will climb up it. And they could have got themselves stuck on here. They ripped off fur. So please never ever tape your water bottle. Don't have anything that isn't labeled for a hamster inside your enclosure, unless it's like popsicle sticks so you know which wood it is. We got a bendy bridge here. This is great because this means that it is a hide, it could be something to climb on, and it's also a chew. The bedding depth in here is very small, and thankfully it wasn't too far up because knowing the setup and knowing it was a stacker, it would have been too humid for them if they were to use this compartment down here. So the less bedding, the better, more airflow, but again, they are burrow animals they actually need the bedding. I wanna say it's probably about an inch to two inches and it is two inches. Not enough bedding, on average should have four to five inches of bedding or more. But let's move on to the top part. Oh, it actually has a sticker, hold on. Sticker says 29 by 18. It's saying this is 522 square inches of floor space, but I can tell you right now that is no. We're just gonna measure it. 25 and a half by 15 and a half. That's only 395 square inches. So like I was saying before, you can't really go off of what the sticker says because you wanna be measuring in the middle because it's collapsing inward. When putting in paper towel rolls or toilet paper, make sure there's at least some slits on it because hamsters, especially bigger ones, could get them stuck. Cut it down the middle, it'll keep its shape. This will be very safe and secure for them in case they wanna get inside of it. This is inappropriate and please, I would just say to anybody, if you're using a flying saucer wheel, just discontinue it. It's not needed. Lightweight, terrible materials. Classic wheels are better for them, better for their backs. And this is seven inches. They need 10 to 12. And if you have a flying saucer, you need to have one to two inches above a regular classic wheel, typically 12 inch wheel. So this is not okay at all. And we have the all living things line where these are less than three inches of opening for the animal. And it's very hard because they have ridges inside which restrict the movement of a hamster. And if they have pouched their food, it's gonna be very difficult to move in one direction and they could get stuck. Lots of hamsters have passed away in tubes like this. So please never use them. This is very inappropriate. This person probably just didn't know better. It's okay, because we've all made mistakes. And I do want to encourage people that are eager to learn and to grow. It's okay if you acknowledge it and you go past that. If you're just stuck in there and if you can't get over that hurdle, oh, I unintentionally hurt my animal without knowing this, I feel so bad and guilty, please don't. But there are people out there that might just hold that against them and might never move on past that. But please understand that this person might not have wanted to neglect their animal. This seems very unintentional. This is from Petco. This is very small. We don't actually like using this for Syrian hamsters. Uh, this is also from Petco. But the thing is, is once they get all the hay out of here, they might try to get in these small holes. And this is not even, is this an inch? This might be an inch. And they might attempt to get inside of here, especially dwarf hamsters. Dwarf hamsters have tried to squeeze in through very tight spaces and end up killing themselves. So please understand if you see any sort of opening like this, don't give an animal a chance to get inside of here because they're probably going to try and they're probably gonna injure themselves. Always pay attention to the size of the hole. And if you have any small hides 
that are too small for Syrian hamsters, the way to get around that is by having an open bottom. That way, if they ever were to get stuck inside of a small hide, they have the bottom to burrow down and get out. And then the all living things right here. And then, yeah, this is all. And it looks like there's only an inch of bedding inside of here. I'm not gonna measure it because obviously it's less than what I see inside of the other one. But if you guys cannot DIY bin cages, which is a very cheap and good alternative, please don't attempt to just leave the lid open. It's not safe. You wanna make sure your enclosure is secure. And just to wrap this up, this is what the hamster was probably originally kept inside of, and they did upgrade if that was the case, because why would you get this after you made a DIY bin cage? It doesn't make any sense. So at least the hamster wasn't in here for that long, but maybe the hamster was in here for a long time, and then they just recently upgraded to a bin cage. I just don't know. I didn't personally talk to them, but as you can see, there is tape here. So if you have to tape this whole thing up to make sure that the animal doesn't escape, that is a major flaw and should not be considered considered as an appropriate enclosure. This already I've reviewed. It's a terrible cage. Please never buy it. And there is a feather inside of here. So I assume they have a cat at home. And the bag that they came with. Right here, it looks like they're using Vita Prima. Oh, this food isn't bad, but it definitely does need a lab block paired alongside it. Now this, a lot of people actually use, and I see more people in the United Kingdom use this type of food. And there is different protein levels. So let me just see what protein level this one has. 17%, so there is some places where I think it's 15, 17, or even 19. 19 is okay. So this is a good food to be using depending on what crude protein level it is. But personally, I just don't use selective. And also, the Vitacraft drops with strawberry. This has high amounts of sugar, definitely not appropriate. You could accidentally crash your hamster for a sugar rush. And we've actually have experience with this where hamsters would crash after eating high amounts of sugar so we don't actually use sugar drops anymore. Well, I call them sugar drops, but like they're yogi drops, but too much sugar, don't ever use this. There is a very disgusting, not even clean hamster ball. My stance on this is I used to use them, I no longer use them. There's better alternatives out there like free roaming and play pins that are more appropriate to be using. This right here is just waste of plastic. Don't like plastic things. Go with ceramic if you're gonna be using ceramic hides and things like that or wood hides. So my voice is almost gone. I need to give myself a break. But for what I see here, this person unfortunately was not very well educated in appropriate hamster care and what they did pass off to the rescue wasn't appropriate. Were they evil, disgusting creatures for doing this to a hamster? No, because the hamster is actually in really good shape. Her body score is perfect. She definitely could have used a whole lot more enrichment. She is very sassy. She definitely needed more, but this wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen and she was not neglected. The area is not dirty at all. So thank you so much for watching today's intake video. If you liked it, hit like and leave comments down below to help out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video and take care. Bye.